Thanks for tuning in. Today I want to share everything you need to know about Chanel, the house of Chanel, and its products for you to be a really savvy shopper. This video isn't intended to be a history lesson of the house of Chanel, but rather to share the key terms, concepts, designs, or style names, things like that, so you have the knowledge when you walk into a boutique or when you're looking online, so you can be very specific about the things that you're looking for. I think this video will be especially helpful for those who are just broaching into the world of luxury, who are just broaching into Chanel as a brand and would like to better understand you know, what it's about, what are some of its key characteristics, uh, and really for you to feel more comfortable when you walk into a boutique so you don't feel intimidated by the sales associate if that's how you feel right now. So I hope you find this video helpful. I have 10 main areas that I wanna focus on, so I'm going to get straight into it. So the first area I wanna to touch upon is what we mean when we refer to a Chanel classic flap versus a Chanel reissue bag. So this right here, this is an example of the Chanel classic flap. So the classic flap refers to a flat bag style. So you'll see there's the flap here with the double CC turn lock closure. Uh, so this is really the key feature that distinguishes a classic flap from a reissue bag. I don't actually own a reissue, so I'll pop in a picture here so you can see the difference. Uh, you'll see that it's the same with the diamond quilting. Uh, of course, you can have chevron quilting variations, and as you see back here, this classic flap has uh, vertical stripes. Classic flap or the reissue style doesn't necessarily refer to the type of quilting, but rather uh, the style of bag and the, and the type of closure it has. The reissue also has a different strap, so you'll see this is a chain strap that has interwoven leather in it. Uh, the reissue has a full metal strap and uh, that metal strap is inspired by the uh, key holder uh, like necklace that uh, Coco Chanel saw when she was growing up in an orphanage. Those are the key distinguishing features between a classic flap and a uh, 2.55 reissue. The next point is around the different sizes for Chanel classic flap bags. They range from a mini all the way to, I think they're calling a double XL now. So the smallest Chanel classic flap, I believe is called an extra mini. It is very tiny. If I can find a picture, I will add it here. Uh, the next size up is what they call a Chanel classic mini. And there are two styles. There's a square version and a rectangular version. I own the rectangular version, so you'll see it here. This is a mini classic flap, and I'll add a picture for the square classic flap. After the mini is the small classic flap, which is this bag right here. So just to do a quick visual comparison of size, it's a little bit larger. After the small, there's a medium flap, and this is my medium flap here. So you, again, as a quick uh, visual reference, you can see the medium flap is a little bit larger. After the medium flap is the jumbo, which I have behind here. Uh, so this is a jumbo classic flap, even though it has vertical quilting. It's considered to be a classic flap style uh, in the jumbo size. And you can see the jumbo is quite a bit larger. Uh, this is also a vintage item, so the shape is a little bit more rectangular than the current jumbos. The current jumbos uh, have a little bit more of like this curve that you see in the, in the flap here. It's more curved and it will be slightly more rectangular feeling than uh, this that you see here, which looks very, very square, but this is nonetheless considered a jumbo size. And then above this jumbo size, is what we call a maxi, so it would be even larger than this jumbo. And then in the most recent collections that are in the shops today, there is a double XL travel bag. So that is a massive flat bag uh, that is intended to be used for travel. It is massive. <laughs> it is a very, very large, hence the name, extra large 
travel bag. So I hope that helps kind of decipher all the different size names. If you need more references for the specific size like dimensions of each of those, I definitely check online um, and I'll link some references down below. In terms of the shoulder strap when it comes to these different styles, the extra mini and minis are intended to be crossbody, so these straps are very long. Uh, when you start going to the small classic flap, which is this guy right here, uh, the straps are only intended to be a shoulder length or if you uh, like draw one up this way, then you could sling it over your shoulder, but not quite a crossbody bag. So the same goes for the medium. Oops. The same goes for the medium as well as the jumbo and the maxis. They are all intended to be shoulder bags rather than crossbody bags. So next I'll move on to the size references for the reissue bags. I don't have a reissue in my collection so I can't do quite that visual comparison that I was doing with the flat bags. A fun fact of the 2.55 reissue, uh, it's called the 2.55 because the bag was introduced uh, February of 55, 1955 uh, and so that's where the name came from. The sizes range from the smallest which is a 224 size all the way to a 227 and each size is an increment of one. So there's a 224, a 225, a 226, and a 227. I believe those are the four main sizes when it comes to the 2.55 style. And I believe the difference is also uh, a difference of one centimeter across each style. That's my understanding. The next topic I want to address is this notion of a classic style versus a seasonal style. Now, when you're starting out to purchase luxury goods into your collection, uh, you might be running across these terms a lot, very frequently, or you might be finding it very difficult to understand clearly what the difference is when folks are referencing to a classic style versus a seasonal style. Everyone can have their own definition and their own interpretation of what it means to be a classic versus a seasonal piece. So this is just my opinion and how I really break it down for myself, specifically for Chanel, because I would I would argue I use those terms slightly differently for different houses. So specifically for Chanel, when, when I think of a classic bag, those are bag styles that come out every year. Uh, it can even be for shoes. It can be for really any style, uh, any item that they create, but it's a design that comes out year after year after year in multiple collections. So, for example, this uh, small classic flap that I have is a classic design. So this is a classic style, although it may be in a seasonal color. So in terms of classic colors, uh, would be black and beige. Those are considered the classic colors for Chanel that they will come out with all the time. Colors outside of that are considered seasonal colors uh, and those come out based on the color palette for that particular season. So that's how they, they get broken out. The reissue is another example of a classic style because it comes back uh, every single season with different colors. Uh, the boy bag started as a seasonal bag. It started to do very well. It was well received by, uh, by, by their customer base. And so the, the boy bag is now considered a classic bag. It's one that they will include in all of their collections going forward. Uh, and then there are other examples of classic styles like for when it comes to card holders, this is considered a classic style because they will come out with this time and time again. Although again, this one is in a seasonal color. And an example of a seasonal card holder is actually this one. Uh, you'll see it looks a little different with like the embossed CC in there. So it's a classic color, but it's a seasonal piece. This item you may not see ever again because it came out for that particular season. This one, you can guarantee to find it black, beige, red, uh, and every season it'll come out in new colors that you can, you can find. Uh, another piece to note about seasonal pieces, there are sometimes some characteristics and features that indicate it is a seasonal piece. So for example, uh, the straps might be a little bit different. Um, there can be some leather accents or leather tips like this bag right here. So you see uh, it starts with a chain and it ends with this leather piece that goes over the shoulder. Uh, a lot of times that you'll see that across a lot of different seasonal bags that come out. You can also notice that the chains are a little bit thinner. So this is the chain on my medium flat bag. 
And although this is a classic style, I believe because it came out in a tweed fabric, this was more of a seasonal piece. And also this is not in a double flap. So you see there's only a single flap. So I see those and I consider this to be then more of a, a seasonal piece instead of it being uh, like a super, super classic piece. One thing to note about the classic uh, flat bags that come out nowadays they are a double flap style so you'll see that there's one more flap underneath before you can access your items up inside um, that was a feature that was introduced uh, later down the road it wasn't always there the chanel bags the classic flaps it, the vintage styles you'll notice a lot of times they will be a single flap because the double flap wasn't introduced until much much later uh, the double flap was added so that it could keep the structural integrity of the bag because as you continue to use it and as you like keep it under your arm uh, this piece would start to compress down and it would kind of peak here it would turn into a triangle so the double flap is intended to uh, keep its shape for a much longer period of time as you are building out your collection i think it's helpful to be mindful of which styles are considered classics and which styles are are more seasonal i believe you should get whatever speaks to you whatever makes your heart sing i don't think it's necessary to have to only focus on the classic pieces before you can build your collection out to include other styles i would say like i introduced this into my collection very very early on and i didn't really have a lot of classic pieces like this is more of a recent addition and things like that so I, I just go based off of what I like the styles that I see that I like uh, where classic versus seasonal comes to play a little bit more is if you are going to be reselling your bags if you have either an intention or you think you may want to in the future or classic bags tend to hold their value a little bit more than the seasonal bags so that's just something to be mindful of in case that matters to you uh, but I say just go for a style that you love. If you know you're going to love that style, if you know you're going to wear it a lot, then like, it does it really matter what the resale value is? Because you're going to enjoy it every time you use it and you're, you're going to be driving that cost per wear down. So it's really up to you. It's your personal preference. What is more important? Uh, but that's just so you are aware as you are adding pieces to your collection. The next topic I want to broach is uh, how to read the retail tags on your items. I've only recently become a lot more comfortable with understanding what is on the retail tag. And by retail tag, I mean these tags right here. Uh, sometimes when you purchase an item, your essay will keep these in the box with you or sometimes they will take them away. I've, I've had both of those happen. Uh, nowadays, because I work with the same essay, I, I ask that I keep all the paperwork with it just because I like to have them as reference. But uh, if they do take it away, I wouldn't be too alarmed. Uh, I think it just depends on each boutique in their practice. But this is what I refer to when I mean the retail tag. For shoes, they will often be a, a sticker on the box for the shoes. Each of these tags have different sections on them, if you will, that contain a wealth of information. In the top left corner, you will see a number and a letter combination. The number are the last two digits of the manufacturing year and the letter indicates what season it was a part of and what season it came out in. Uh, so in this example, there's 19B. So 19 means it's 2019. B indicates the fall, winter, act one collection. So each of the letters indicates what collection it's a part of. If you see an R or REV, that tends to mean that it's a revolving collection. It is a classic piece that they will come out with over time. Uh, I wouldn't say every year or every collection they necessarily bring out that same piece, but it is considered like a classic, classic piece that they will continuously produce and, and uh, distribute to the different boutiques. Then you can also see the letter P after the numbers. The P references Spring Summer Act 1. Those usually hit the stores January through March. You can also see an S uh, that references the Spring Summer Act 2 collection and that will normally hit stores uh, March through June. Uh, then you can also see an A, and A will indicate the autumn pre-fall uh, Metier collection, and that will hit the stores 
uh, from or May through September. B indicates the fall winter act one collection that hits the stores June through October. Then you can also see a K that is the fall winter act two collection that usually hits the stores August through November. And then you can also see a C which indicates the cruise collection and that comes in the stores November through January. Those are all seven letters that you can see on your tag that will let you know at a glance what collection it was a part of. Underneath the year, like manufacturing year and collection information, you'll often see a series that starts with A and, a, 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 and some numbers. Uh, so that's actually the style number that will reference whether it is a small classic flap or a jumbo classic flap or a 225 reissue uh, or a wallet on a chain like that that's what that number will indicate really quickly it uh and th and this uh tag information is across ready to wear shoes accessories small leather goods bags literally everything uh underneath that a series you will see a Y series and that Y series will indicate what material and hardware is used so depending on the combination that is there you will see whether it is like a, a particular leather and hardware combination or if it's just like a gold color because there might not be a leather that's what that series indicates uh, and then underneath that is the color so uh, usually it, it depends sometimes they'll put the name of the color underneath it as well uh, but that last number series is about the color of the bag and then for for the ones where it is applicable you will see a size reference underneath as well if you see an SZ that tends to stand for no size because there is only one size for let's say a card holder or uh, a bracelet uh, but for items that do have a size, like the ready to wear, like belts and shoes and things like that, you will see the size be the last number that comes in underneath. That was decoding the retail tag. I think this information is especially helpful for when you're purchasing items online, uh, if you're purchasing them from the pre-loved market, because uh, then you have a reference for being able to see you know whether the serial number matches the collection that it states that it's from or you can even look back to find more information on that particular collection and make sure that it's an item that looks like it would fit in with that collection also if you are looking for a particular piece and you ask folks for the style number you will know whether they gave you enough information to actually take it back to your essay and try to find the piece you're looking for uh, the next topic I want to discuss is the serial number uh, as it will tie nicely to understanding the retail tag. The serial number is a unique identifier, a unique number that is given to each of your pieces. Uh, in the bags there will often be a sticker that is placed in one of the corners and that's where you can see the serial number and it should match the serial card that is given when you purchase a bag. When it comes to shoes, it's usually uh, printed on one side of the shoe, usually like on the inner side, uh, or it could be on, on, on the tongue of the shoe, if, if there is a tongue. Um, and, and that will be the serial number along with the size for your shoe. That's typically what you will see in the shoe. Uh, when it comes to SLGs, they also have the the sticker if you will if you can see roughly right there there's a sticker uh, so they will also have serial numbers when it comes to the costume jewelry though there is no serial number that really gets associated with it at least not one that I could find um, there oftentimes is a little uh, like medallion that's on the back of like your earrings and things like that which will indicate what that will give you that uh, number letter combo so you know what year and collection it was manufactured for but so far I haven't really found a, a, a unique serial number that's been put into any of the costume jewelry. The first two numbers of a serial number will indicate what year it was manufactured in and uh, those numbers are actually not uh, 
they do not coincide with the actual year so just because it was created in 2017 doesn't mean you will expect 17 to be the first two numbers there is a chart uh, that I found from Yogi's closet I'll link that down below and it gives the breakdown of the serial numbers like the first two numbers and, and what year they should correspond to I think this information is also very helpful, especially if you purchase vintage items. It gives you a better sense of how old that piece is. Uh, this item right here from the serial number, I know that this was uh, created in the early 90s, so it is looking at almost 30 years old, and I think it's in great shape for that, but uh, it helps give that reference so I can quickly understand you know, what I'm looking at and what I think the value of that item should be. So I know those authenticity cards are are really important, especially for folks who are purchasing items from the pre-loved market. Uh, it tends to give a sense of security and, and it reassures the buyer that they are looking at an authentic piece. Uh, from my experience, um, I, have really, I really only remember serial, car serial cards being given out uh, for handbag purchases. Uh, if you see like that serial card next to shoes, uh, like a shoe posting for Chanel shoes. I, I don't I wouldn't take that to necessarily mean anything I've seen it before which is why I'm bringing this particular example up um, because I have never received a like a Authenticity card with a shoe purchase. I also haven't received I, I haven't received that with any of my jewelry purchases so that's something to be wary of if you see someone who tends to be putting that as like a uh, a sign of authenticity uh, there are only certain items where authenticity cards will come with them so don't always expect it to be there because it may never have been given in the first place uh, and don't always assume that it's authentic because there is an authenticity card because there are some pieces that don't have authenticity cards that come with them okay now I'll move on to what makes up the bag so I'll start with the different leathers you'll hear uh, caviar leather and lambskin leather get thrown around a lot in the context of Chanel and that's because those are the two most classic leather types that come out from the house of Chanel and so what do we mean by a caviar leather like what the heck does that even mean caviar leather is like a treated calfskin and it's often viewed as as a more hard wearing scratch resistant type of leather because it is uh, it, it looks like it's treated a little bit and it's tougher uh, lambskin on the other hand is a very smooth soft leather when you touch it it seems to feel like it's a it's a bit thinner and it might be more delicate so i have a couple of examples to show you so this is an example of a caviar leather piece and I'm showing it against the light in hopes that you can see the grain. Uh, that grain, that kind of bubbliness, if you will, is why it gets its name caviar, because it looks like caviar. <laughs> uh, and it is, it is definitely, when you touch it, you definitely can tell there is some coating there and it feels like, like it's not going to get a lot of scratches on it. Uh, Contrary to caviar is lambskin right here and I'm also putting this against the light so you can see really how smooth this leather is. It is a very like buttery soft. It is a very um, like luminescent leather if that makes sense. So, so caviar sometimes looks shiny to me like it, not quite as shiny as patent leather but there is like that sheen if you will um kind of like a it's a little more of like a plasticky sheen when it comes to lambskin though i feel like it gives much more of a like a a, a luster to the leather it looks very shiny because it's very supple um so that that's how i would describe lambskin a lot of times folks uh, will mention that lambskin is a lot more delicate and requires more maintenance, requires more babying and things like that. I have both lambskin and caviar pieces in my collection. I love both of them. I don't necessarily believe you have to go out of your way to heavily baby a lambskin bag. But I do want to comment that every year the lambskin and caviar leathers will get manufactured a bit differently. So there are some years, like this is a lambskin flat bag, 
And if I touch this and I touch this, they feel very, very different. And it might just be how the leather had to be treated to bring out the specific color in each one. But this is much, much softer than this one. This, this lambskin leather actually feels really tough where I'm not particularly concerned that I have to baby this one. This one is much softer and I've worn it a lot and so there is some wear on it, but that's, that's just expected because of how much I've worn this piece. I don't necessarily think that it's showing this kind of wear because it's lambskin. Uh, but when it comes to caviar, they do tend to uh, resist a lot of scratches and like impacts, things that can happen to it a little bit better. Uh, so if that's something that's important to you, that would be a leather that I would go with. Um, my vintage jumbo is also in a caviar leather, which is I think part of the reason why it has maintained its shape really well. Um, vintage lambskin items you'll see like these are these uh, di the diamond quilting is really puffy here but it will eventually kind of flatten out this is not vintage but I'm looking over and compared to this brand new one like this is already getting a little flattened out so that's just something to be mindful of in case that's something that will bother you uh, I don't think it's bothersome I think it just shows the natural character and the beauty of the item that has really withstood the test of time but that's just my preference so I hope this this quick comparison here is helpful to understand what we mean by lambskin and caviar outside of these two leathers of course Chanel uses a lot of other fabrics like they use tweed on a bag here so this is not really going to be leather though though it is a leather structured bag so there is some leather in it uh, but I've also seen like satin bags that are entirely made out of fabric I've seen uh, like a terry cloth style I've also seen more of a like a denim or a canvas style so there are a ton of materials that get used a lot of seasonal bags will be made out of some kind of calfskin i wouldn't necessarily get too fixated on what the leather type is when you touch it you'll be able to get a better understanding as to whether or not you think with how you handle items and your lifestyle whether that would withstand the impact of of your daily life so those are just all the different pointers when it comes to the different handbag materials. All right, moving on to hardware. That's another piece that is uh, especially relevant when we are talking about bags and some small leather goods. Uh, so Chanel used to make all of their hardware gold plated. It was 24 karat gold plated. Uh, so this item, this vintage beauty back here is actually uh, a gold plated hardware and you can see the richness of the gold color that comes through it is much more of a deeper yellow gold and you will also be able to tell if whether the hardware is gold plated or not because there is a little indication on the actual cc logo here it is up here in this corner and i'll try to do a close-up photo so you can see it better sometimes you'll see it on this side and sometimes you'll see it on the bottom but that's the indicator that lets you know that the piece has 24 karat gold plated hardware as you can imagine uh, that will sometimes drive the value of some of the pieces a little bit higher because there's some inherent value in the gold that's plating the hardware. I believe in 2008 was when Chanel stopped using gold plated hardware and used gold tone hardware. Uh, I feel like there's mixed reviews as to whether or not they still incorporate some real gold in that process or not and I don't have enough clarity on it so I'm just going to continue to refer to it as gold tone hardware. And uh, I, I feel like in more recent years, the gold hardware has become a lot less of this deep yellow and more of like a mellowed out gold color. Uh, so there is gold hardware, there is silver hardware. This bag has silver hardware and you can see it's like a shiny silver hardware. Uh, there's also ruthenium hardware, which I have on this bag right here. You can see it's like an aged, darker like a gum metal -y color and you can see it on the straps here so that's referred to as ruthenium hardware and then there's also a light gold hardware my uh, tweed flap kind of has that light gold hardware where it is well yeah it's like it's a shiny gold some people call this a champagne gold because it's not quite as yellow as this one and it's much lighter and my card wallet here also has that same champagne gold. It's, it's, it's 
nice because it almost leans both gold and silver and it becomes a very versatile piece where it's not like I'm gold and it's not like I'm silver it's somewhere in between uh, so I think because of that feature they've been using a lot more champagne gold or light gold hardware on their items because of its versatility but uh, but yeah, that's what I would consider to be like a light gold or champagne gold hardware. Of course, there's also in select seasons where they'll come out with what I refer to as this like rainbow hardware. So you'll see it has like an oil slick color to it. Uh, these were, I think, bigger, much bigger in like 2017 where there were several bags that came out with this. Uh, some people call it a rainbow hardware. I'm trying to see if you can see. Some people call it rainbow, some people call it oil slick, uh, some people call it like a unicorn hardware, whatever you wanna call it really. Uh, but yeah, that's what they are re referring to because of all of the colors that are inside the hardware. And then last but not least, uh, there's what we refer to as so black. Uh, so black refers to a piece that has black leather and black hardware. And so this is my So Black piece, and you'll see the CC logo is there, but it is all in black, and the chain is also black, uh, chain with black leather running through it. So this is what we mean by So Black hardware. Uh, the next piece is specific to ready to wear, and this is more of like an informational piece that I wanted to uh, make sure more people were aware of, uh, because I was pleasantly surprised when I found out. If you're interested in purchasing Chanel ready to wear, uh, it, I think it's helpful to know that Chanel offers free alterations on their ready to wear. And the ready to wear alterations are intended to be able to accommodate one size up and one size down. Uh, my understanding is this is free and this is like a lifetime service they offer uh, so that, you know, as your size changes, as it may inevitably do so over time, uh, you're able to alter the pieces that you purchase so that they can fit you best at those different times of your life. Uh, so I think that's really helpful to know. Uh, that might be something that helps you make a purchase decision. It may not be, uh, but that was something that I didn't find out about until I started purchasing ready to wear. So, so I just wanted to share that to make sure that everybody knew. And the last topic I wanted to touch upon were acronyms. So these are some acronyms that are specific to the House of Chanel and there's some acronyms that are more or less uh, thrown around in the like luxury community, if you will. Uh, if you're starting out, I think a lot of times these acronyms will sound very foreign and so I thought this would be helpful to compile some of the key acronyms that I'm aware of and the ones that would be helpful for you who might be looking for specific pieces. So. Uh, when it comes to Chanel, there are a couple acronyms that stand out that are unique to Chanel. Uh, one of them would be a walk. So a walk refers to a wallet on chain. I have a couple examples. So what we mean by a wallet on chain is, you know, something like this. This is a reissue style because of the square closure here. But um, it is an item that is typically very small. Uh, it is intended to be exactly what it's called, a wallet on a chain. So it has card slots, it has a long chain to be crossbody, and it is intended to be um, just a little bit bigger than your wallet. But I, I know nowadays a lot of folks use these as like a, a very small handbag for going out or for running quick errands and things like that. So this is what we refer to as a walk. They come in many shapes and sizes, of course. So this is a reissue style. You will see ones that have the classic CC logo here, and it's like a it's like a flap open and close. Uh, there are also styles. There are more seasonal styles where uh, there's like a larger CC logo here and things like that. There are also some that are now discontinued. This is uh, an example of one of them. This is called the Half Moon Walk because it has this like moon shape to it um, and you'll see a lot of earlier walks will have more of this um, like embossing of the logo rather than it being like a metal piece but uh, WOC stands for wallet on chain another acronym that I think is specific to Chanel is uh, an O case 
and the O case is often what you will see on the retail tag of some of these pieces. I believe O case stands for other case and it's just a bucket term that Chanel uses for a lot of their small leather goods or pouches essentially. Um, this back here is actually technically an O case. It's large enough that I use it as a clutch, but it was considered an O case. You'll see O cases range from this larger size here and it goes all the way down to those small uh, like zipper pouches. And I think they're absolutely adorable. Uh, but that's what it stands for if it says an O case. I believe there are some that look like they could fit more like more of your toiletries Those are also considered O cases. So when you hear people say oh, I have an O case uh, It just means it's a it's a pouch and it doesn't always mean it's a specific size because as you can see There can be very large and there can be very small O cases other acronyms that I think are helpful to know are like SLG which is small leather goods uh, those refer to your non-handbag items, but they are leather goods. So wallets, card holders like these over here, um, key rings, key holders, all of those are considered small leather goods because they are made of leather, but they are not a handbag. Some folks consider belts to be small leather goods. I consider that more to be an accessory, but uh, I can see why it falls into that category because it is a small good made with leather. Uh, I think technically O cases would fall under the category of small leather goods in general. Uh, it's just that Chanel likes to call a lot of their random pouches O cases. <laughs> RTW stands for ready to wear and uh, that's just a term that references the non-couture clothing items that are created by luxury houses. Uh, everything that you see, even in department stores, all of that is considered ready to wear. Those are items that are manufactured by set sizes and not uh, specifically made to order for your body. A lot of times you'll see on uh, listings for uh, luxury goods you'll see like GHW, PHW, SHW uh, that stands for gold hardware, palladium hardware, silver hardware uh, it's just to minimize the number of words that go into your title a lot of times uh, so that's just how a lot of the hardware information gets uh, gets reduced into an acronym so folks can easily recognize it without having to read all of the description. Uh, I'm sure there are some other acronyms that I'm missing here. These are the ones that came top of mind. So if you have any others that you want to share, uh, please leave them down below and I'd love to add them to my data dictionary. Uh, so those were all of my 10 tips. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it informative. I tried to keep it structured and uh, I also hope you found it helpful that I could share some specific examples that fall into each one of those. I'm not intending to like flex my collection or anything. It's more just, uh, I think it's it just really brings it home when you can see some of those things live and some of those characteristics so, so that they stand out more for you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below or head on over to Instagram and I'd be happy to help however I can. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate all of your feedback and support. Uh, not to mention, I have almost 300 subscribers now which is really mind-blowing I really appreciate every one of you who uh, watches my videos and subscribes to my channel this is just an a really a, an outlet for me to share some of the information that I have with folks who are also interested in this topic so I really really appreciate everybody who's here and who who's come along with this journey with me but if you like this kind of content and you haven't already subscribed uh, I post videos every Sunday so if you'd like to be one of the first to know feel free to to subscribe. So until next time, bye!